is this part of the airspeed indicator worthless or could it save your life? So I think this part of the airspeed indicator often gets forgotten about. Everywhere else on the airspeed indicator gets all the attention. Oh, look at me, I'm the green arc. I'm very important. Oh, but look at me, I'm the red line. And then this little part, less than the white arc, it doesn't even get a color. So is there any significance to this section? So yes, this part is very important and could save your life. So this part, obviously used before becoming airborne, is used to measure acceleration on your takeoff roll. So because as you push the throttles forward, you don't wanna just assume the engine's gonna make appropriate power, but you want to know that it is and you want to know that your acceleration is what you would expect. So there have been several accidents where the aircraft was not producing adequate power, leading to very late aborted takeoffs and runway overruns. Or maybe it's not even engine related, right? What if as you be in your takeoff roll, the wind shifts from a crosswind to more of a tailwind? But whatever the case, you need a way to determine and have a checkpoint on your takeoff roll that your acceleration is acceptable for this takeoff. So this rule of thumb is called the 50-70 rule. And what exactly does it mean? It means that if you haven't reached 70% of your rotation speed by 50% of the runway length, then you should abort the takeoff. So in our Piper Cherokee, our rotation speed is 55 miles an hour. 70% of that is roughly 40 miles per hour. So we wanna be at least 40 miles per hour at our decision point. Now, where is the 40 on the airspeed indicator? It's in this little forgotten area without any markings. See, so this is a very important section of the airspeed indicator. Okay, now we got the 70% figured out. So next we need to figure out the 50%. So this is where there's kind of like two schools of thought determining this. So do I need 70% of my speed by 50% of the runway? Or do I need 70% of the speed by 50% of my calculated takeoff ground roll distance. So this rule of thumb actually says to be at, you know, 70% of your speed by 50% of the runway. But what if the runway is 5,000 feet long, right? This means that I'm fine that after 2,500 feet of ground roll, I'm at 40 miles an hour and I'm meeting this rule of thumb, right? So it needs to be balanced out a little bit. And then, you know, so the other um, school of thought is to calculate the required ground roll, you know, for your weight, the winds, etc., and then divide that number by two to get your 50%. So then which one do you use? You know, maybe you calculate both and use the most conservative. So after you have your distance figured out, then the next thing is you want to pick a spot along the runway, which will be your decision point. So there probably won't be an exact marker at your precise location but maybe you can use like, you know, the nearest taxiway and intersecting runway, or maybe there's some sign along the runway. You know, even if it's not precise, at least you have something, something's better than nothing. You know, then it's just keeping in mind, you know, as you begin your takeoff roll, right? If you don't have 70% of that by the marker, then it's time to abort because it's quicker to stop than accelerate. You'll always have plenty of runway remaining to stop in time. So there are a lot of rules and thumb in aviation, and this one's definitely a pretty good one. So thanks everyone for watching today. We we'll hope you join us on a future flight, and thanks for flying J1 Aviation.